some time back we wrote down all our, all our lagrange equations and last time we were looking at some of uh, simple examples where we got uh, to get some practice with um, using all our lagrange equations okay since we have been making lagrangian as a central thing let's look at some of its properties now here we go properties of of Euler sorry properties of Lagrangian okay first thing is that lagrangian is a scalar quantity okay unlike where you when you use newton's equations of motion you have to know forces which are which are vector quantities on all the particles to find out how the system is going to evolve but when you are using all lagrange equations what you need to know is the lagrangian which is made up of the kinetic energy and potential energy and both of these are scalar quantities okay so that's one uh, thing lagrangian is a scalar okay um so for our uh, present context it's scalar under rotations okay also let's say um you are looking at a system which has several particles but you can group the particles into two um, parts the particles belonging to part a let's say one of the parts is called part a those particles do not interact with the particles which belong to the part b okay so i am imagining a system with two parts parts a and part b there are lots of particles in there the particles within a they interact among themselves particles within within b they interact among themselves that the part but the particles from this group do not interact with particles from the other group okay let's say that's a, uh, a situation then can i say something about the lagrangian of this entire system okay and what i want to um, uh, show is that in such a case the lagrangian of the entire system can be written as a sum of lagrangians of individual parts okay that's what i want to say and it's quite easy so what i'm trying to convey is the following so we have a system of let's say n particles and i'm saying it has two or more than two it doesn't matter you can take more than two also two or more let's say two and this two non interacting parts okay so here is your system okay it's isolated from everything else so um and let's say it has lots of particles here and there okay and let's say i can um classify these particles into two sets okay i'm not dividing a line i'm not putting a line here to uh, say that this is part a this is part b because i'm imagining the particles are all moving around but i'm saying okay this guy is belonging to part a this guy is belonging to part b a this guy may be part b they don't talk to each other okay so i have two non interacting parts a and b by which i mean um i mean what i said so let me uh, represent by r a all the particles or the coordinates of the particles which are belonging to part a so let's say r1 to 
um, R M belong to that that set, and then R B denotes all the Cartesian coordinates of the particles which belong to set B, and I write them R M plus one one two R N. So that makes a total of, and if you look at both the both the parts. Okay, that's good. Now, if I look at the system as a whole, then the Lagrangian of the system, which let me say, um, yeah, let's call it L. Lagrangian of the system would be a function of R A, R B. Okay, it depends on all the coordinates of all the particles. In 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 general, that's a general statement. R a dot. It also depends on all the velocities of each of the particles. Okay, that's what our system is. Now, this you know what form it has. It has the form of kinetic energy minus the potential energy. So I will write it as half. M I R I dot square, and I have to sum over all the particles. But I will split this sum into two parts. I will split because I can. This is an ordinary sum. So first, you have sum over all the particles belonging to the class to the um, to the part A. Then again, you have half M. Let me put J. It doesn't matter. You can put I as well, but I'll just put J. There's no special reason for that. And here I sum over all the particles which belong to set B. And then you have the potential energy, which belongs, uh, which depends on all the particles in the system. Okay. Let. So in shorthand, I write it like this. Okay. That's good. Now, if the potential, uh, if the parts are not interacting, then the potential energy of the entire system can be written as the potential energy of the part A plus the potential energy of the part B. Right? That is what it means by non-interacting. So, that is what I will do. Because they are not interacting, this U can be written as U of R A plus U of R B. Okay, it can be split into two such parts. Um, maybe I should use a different symbol for you, but because it's clear from here um, that these are energies corresponding to parts A and part B, so I will not bother by bother with writing the uh, changing the symbol for you for these individual parts okay now if that is the case then this lagrangian as you can see i can combine this piece with this and that piece with this okay so i get l of a that's the kinetic energy plus potential energy of that part plus l of b Okay, that's um, one thing which we want to sh wanted to show. So, this splitting can be done only if these parts are not interacting with, e with each other. Otherwise, uh, it makes no sense. You cannot you cannot do this. Okay. Also, uh, let's go to next page. So, I have written down two properties. Okay, property number three. Okay, it's um, useful to notice that that the Lagrangian which we are writing, okay, it's not unique. So it's not that if you give a system to me, there is a unique Lagrangian that I can write for it. Okay, we will come to. Um, this um, the reason for this also in a 
uh, in a later video but for now i will show that you can add a total time derivative to the lagrangian okay and it will still satisfy the equations of motion okay it will still sat satisfy the euler lagrange equations so let me um, let me write it down so lagrangian is not uniquely uniquely determined okay which means that if i give you two lagrangians l and l prime okay they will describe the same system meaning you will get the same euler lagrange equations from them provided the l and l prime differ by a total time derivative so more precisely if l prime is l plus df over dt where f is a function of all the coordinates generalized coordinates q's okay so q1 q2 and uh, so forth and also possibly of time okay if this is a situation then l prime and l they describe the same um, system so how do i check this well what i should do is look at the df over dt term and plug into the um, euler lagrange equation and if the contribution arising from df over dt th this piece goes to zero then we can conclude that um indeed l prime and l satisfy the same equations of motion okay they they give the same equations of motion so that's what i will do so, so proof okay i will not bother uh, to give proof for a uh, general uh, system with several degrees of freedom i will just give proof for one degree of freedom so i have only one q but you should try to um, repeat the proof for a system which has more than one q but the proof will not be very different it will follow the same lines which i am going to write down here okay so let's look at this d over dt let's say i start with l um del l over del q dot as i said i am looking at only one coordinate now i mean only one degree of freedom q dot and t minus del l over del q equal to 0 i am saying if i replace this l by l plus df over dt the term coming from the f will go to 0 which means if i plug it in plug in this piece also then in addition to this what you have on the left hand side you will also get the following piece you'll get d over dt del over del q dot df over dt that's correct no mistakes minus del over del q and df over dt this is what you will get extra on the left hand side and i would like to show that this is zero okay how do i do that so let me call this term 1 minus term 2 let's look at term one first okay so i look at this total derivative df over dt okay in the term one i am looking only at df over dt first so df over dt is remember the f is functions function of only um q and t not q dots so when i take the total time derivative i get delta f over delta t because i have allowed for an explicit time dependence in f okay so there will be this term 
plus delta f over delta q q dot okay that's correct now if i take a derivative with respect to q dot on this let me take del over del q dot here over del q dot okay what will that be now look at this piece this piece is only a function of q and t because taking a time derivative partial time derivative will not generate any velocity terms right and this piece will be only a function of q and t this piece del f over del q and the time uh, the velocities are only in here so when this derivative partial derivative with respect to the generalized velocity acts on this piece it gives zero here i should use a chain rule but this piece because it does not depend on velocity this partial derivative is going to act only on this q dot okay so i get delta f over delta q and del q dot over del q dot which is 1 so i get del f over del q and as i said because um, maybe i should write down explicitly delta f over delta t is not a function of q dot okay it's not a function of generalized velocities okay that's good now now i should take the total time derivative i have taken care of up to here now i should look at the total time derivative of this entire piece so i take d over oops d over dt let's see if i can oops 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 okay if now i'm taking the total time derivative on the left which means i should okay let me let me repeat it now i take the total time derivative d over dt um this piece this will become a total time derivative acting on del f over del q okay del f over del q this will be your term number 1 okay what is that um yeah okay again i do the same thing i write del f over del q del over del t so i have first del over del t acting on this piece then i have del l uh, sorry del over del q del f over del q times q dot okay that's not a dot product this is just a dot okay perfect now what can i do okay okay that's good that's good you see here i can interchange q and t they are independent variables so i can interchange them which means i can write this as del f over del t del over del q plus del f over del q del over del q q dot okay if you were looking at um, more than one degrees of freedom here your i and j will appear and you will have to just take care of those things now this is so you have del over del q here del over del q here okay so i can write this um sorry i wanted to do one more thing okay so you have del over del q and then i can bring in the q dot in the bracket i can do so because when you take a derivative of partial derivative of velocity with respect to coordinate that's zero okay so i can i can bring this piece in which means i can write this as del over del q df over dt 
And let's see what our second term was. Second term was del over del Q, del F, DF over DT, which is the same here. So this is your equal to second term, which means first term minus second term equals zero. And that is what we wanted to prove that the extra term will not give any contribution. Okay. That's another very important property that you should keep in mind that you can always add a function to the Lagrangian which can be written as a total time derivative of another function which depends only on the generalized coordinates and time and not the velocities. Okay, that's nice. Let's see what else I can say. Yeah. Okay. Um, next, I want to look at the kinetic energy term when we are using generalized coordinates. Okay. So, you know, typically when you are using Cartesian coordinates, you have just sum over uh, half mv squares. Okay, and when you write v squares, you are really summing over uh, velocities of individual particles and there is no cross term. So you do not have any term which is a product of velocity of this particle and that particle in the kinetic energy. But this situation changes when you go to generalized coordinates and that's what we want to look at in the next video. Okay, so see you there in the next video.